Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the weekend, to Saturday. Today is the 20th of May, 2023, to Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America, and LCMS, a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation. I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation, and again, so wonderful to be able to welcome you uh, wherever you might be worldwide to this weekend and this daily devotional piece of ministry. We thank you again for uh, beginning your day with us and uh, trusting that it's going to be a blessing to you as well, my brothers and sisters. Today, we're going to be looking at the subject in our devotional on the Lord's army. And uh, I pray that that will enlighten us, encourage us, and give us genuine, real peace together as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So allow me to please open our time together with prayer. And so we pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. And so, my brothers and sisters, this morning, I'm going to share with you words from Dr. Martin Luther, and he's going to talk about a subject on the gifts of the sacraments. Now, there are a great many of churches within the Christian community that does not believe in the sacramental ministry. They do not believe in the sacraments. And yet the Bible very much teaches them that they are the means of grace, the gifts that God uses and instills to bring people to faith and to keep them in that faith and to give them forgiveness of sins. Yet, there is this stubborn resistance to trust and believe in the sacramental ministry. Yet Jesus only deals with humanity in two ways, word and sacrament ministry, not word or sacrament ministry, meaning you don't have to believe in the sacraments and you're still good. Nope, that's not Jesus' uh, prescription. It's both, word and sacrament ministry. There are people today, pastors in these other camps, that don't believe that the sacraments are efficacious, in other words, effective on their own merits, that it takes human contribution in some form, some belief, some whatever, in order to make it effective. Not true. The Bible says God's word, he speaks, things become, has nothing to do with any human contribution. It's just simply the power of God's word. So there is tremendous disparity on this subject within the Christian community. There ought not to be. So I pray that this uh, word from Dr. Martin Luther will be a source of instruction uh, and blessing and genuine real peace to you this morning. 
He uses the text, St. Matthew chapter 21, verse 13. And uh, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Well, what does that have to do with the gifts of the sacraments? Let's take a look at that. God has freely given us his son and all his gifts, such as his word, the supper, baptism, and absolution. And through holy baptism, people are supposed to be washed and cleansed of all sins and obtain forgiveness of sins. The supper was instituted so that those who need consolation would be refreshed by it and strengthened in their faith, and so that we would better appreciate the forgiveness of sins from day to day and be swept clean of the sins and filth that remains in us. Likewise, the absolution and other parts were all instituted in order that the Christian church would be strengthened by them, for they are all a house of prayer to strengthen our faith. That is a fact. God's word for us this morning. And so our devotional uh, on the Lord's army is going to be using Psalm 33, verse 12, as our text. It says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. We all like this image of Gideon, the jar-smashing, torch-bearing, sword-wielding, trumpet-blowing warrior who defeated the Midianites with just 300 men. However, If you look at his whole story, you will see a man who needed a lot of encouragement from God along the way. In Judges chapter 6, God calls Gideon a mighty man of valor. Gideon is not so sure. He asks for signs that God really has chosen him to defeat the Midianites. God delivers. Though God's choice was clear, Gideon kept looking at his own abilities and seeing a deficit. That always is the case. In a way, that's what God wanted him to see. As Gideon sees he is far outnumbered, God gives him another bit of encouragement. While spying on the enemy camp, Gideon hears an enemy soldier telling another about his dream. The interpretation of the dream is that they will be defeated by Gideon. Even the enemy knew of Gideon's upcoming victory. Finally, Gideon worships before God and is ready for battle. God has chosen each believer, that means one who is trusting solely in the person of Jesus Christ, to be in his army. Our enemy, Satan, knows he was defeated by Christ on the cross. We are ready for victory in our battles, not through our own abilities, but because our God is the Lord. We pray. Lord, you are our God. We are chosen and blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and he has redeemed them. He has lifted up a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you again for chiming in this morning, this weekend, to Peace of the Word. I pray that you have found it to be a source of blessing to you. It's a beautiful day here in southern Arizona, and so I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies. Thank <laughs> you.